Hi, I'm Richard Lee, CEO of Ambassador Labs, and thanks for joining me here at DockerCon 2022. I'm here today to talk about Telepresence, one of our open source CNCF projects that we've developed over the past few years, and we're super excited that we're integrating with Docker Desktop for extensions. Telepresence is a powerful tool that we've developed that accelerates that Kubernetes development and test loop, which can be extremely painful. So I'm going to talk about how it works today. And we've actually developed this because a few years ago, we were in your shoes. We were trying to figure out how do you actually develop Kubernetes containers in an efficient way. And we realized the longer it takes for that dev test deploy cycle, the slower your development. And so what we wanted to do was to unlock all the potential. We wanted to go back to how you used to develop with the J2EE or Ruby on Rails application without going backwards on the deployment technology. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So normally when we talk about testing microservices, we go, Oh my goodness, right? And the reason for this is because when you have a bunch of microservices being developed on Kubernetes, you need to get all of them set up in your environment. And that's actually really painful. We've seen two primary methods for actual development. The first is local development. The good thing is it's very affordable because you already have a laptop or workstation to do all your work with. It's a fast dev loop because you're running Minikube or K3S or one of these Docker desktop for Kubernetes. And the key thing is everything's local. So you can use your IDE. You can actually rapidly develop, hit reload, boom. The trade-off is maintenance costs are really high. You may not actually see this, but maintaining those mock APIs, maintaining the scripts to make sure that everyone is actually running the exact same set of services. And every time someone actually changes their service, you've got to update that script. You've got to test it all out. You've got to debug your own environment. And then the final step is if you're actually running databases or message queues, you've got to figure out how to get all that running. And then once you start running all that stuff, your laptop gets really hot, right? And then suddenly you start to slow down. So in reaction to this, we've seen a different model, which is remote testing, right? So the trade-off is everyone gets their own cluster. It's a little bit expensive, right? Because everyone with their own Kubernetes cluster, even if it's not the world's biggest cluster, you're starting to pay that monthly cost to Amazon, Google, Azure, whatever it is. It's a slow dev loop because as you start to develop, you make a code change, you actually have to build your container, you have to push it to a registry, You've got to deploy it into your Kubernetes cluster, and then you run your tests. The advantage is maintenance costs are low. Why are maintenance costs low? It's because you can actually leverage your CI systems to actually keep all your clusters fully updated. So every time someone makes a push to a different service, CI can actually take care of deploying it into your remote cluster. And the great news is your workstation temperature is normal. This is particularly important if you're traveling and your laptop's on your lap and you don't want to burn your lap. So what if we could combine the best of both worlds? What if we could take a local laptop or workstation and let it virtually participate and connect to the remote cluster? This would actually give you the benefits of both the local and the remote, right? So it's affordable because you're using your laptop for most of your development. You get your fast development loop. Yes, you're paying for a remote cluster, but if you can share that remote cluster with everyone else, then it's actually not that expensive. Your maintenance is low because you could still have your CI systems actually maintain your remote cluster every time someone makes a change, it updates the remote cluster. And your workstation and laptop temperature, totally normal. This is what Telepresence does. As I mentioned, it's a CNCF project. And what it lets you do is let you use your laptop or workstation for local isolation so you're not stepping on each other's toes because that's one of the problems with a shared remote cluster. And for things that you're not actually developing, it uses a shared remote cluster. How exactly does this work? Telepresence functions as essentially a high powered VPN or proxy. So in this example here, we've got service A prime running locally on the developer's laptop. We also have service A, which is the main service running in the remote cluster. So when a request gets sent in through the ingress, if that request belongs to service A prime, we actually have a sidecar, we call it an agent that is deployed in front of service A. That agent will inspect that request. If that request does not have a unique HTTP header, in the case of HTTP requests, it's just gonna pass it on service A, and service A doesn't know anything about it. However, if that request actually has a unique HTTP header, 
it actually will get routed to what we call our traffic manager. The traffic manager will actually then proxy that request onto the laptop and tell Service A Prime, it will give Service A Prime the actual response back from the service. And so essentially, you're able to actually set up a virtualized network just for Service A Prime. And this is actually how we actually get isolation. So in this example, A Prime is in purple. And so you see those purple requests hitting that sidecar agent, which gets routed to the traffic manager. And then Service A2, which belongs to Bob. Alice is working on Service A Prime. Bob's working on Service A2. Bob actually has a different authentication token. And so Bob's requests also get routed. It gets intercepted by the smart agent, it gets routed to the traffic manager. The traffic manager sends Bob's request to Bob's laptop, Alice's request to Alice's laptop, and everyone else, they, their requests just get routed to service A. And so you can actually scale this and have an unlimited number of developers because each developer just gets their own authentication token. There must be a catch. Turns out, even though the model's pretty simple, the overall implementation is actually very complex. We want it so that your laptop, for it to run in the cluster, we want to make sure it works perfectly. So when you curl to the Kubernetes API server, it should just work, which means it's not just about routing and traffic management, it's about DNS. So we actually have to intercept DNS. We need to be able to selectively route all your TCP and UDP requests as needed. And then we wanna work with everything on your laptop. So frequently people run endpoint security, they've got VPNs, they've got all sorts of stuff. And then because Docker and container development doesn't just happen on Linux, it also happens on Mac OS and Windows, we need to support all of these. This is actually a headache. So we spent the past three or four years just debugging all these different use cases. We have automatic crash reporting that you can actually automatically open a GitHub issue so that we can actually help troubleshoot and figure out all these permutations. And then Docker came along. Docker announced to us, they reached out to us and said, there is this new program called Docker Desktop for extensions where you can actually build a plugin. And we were so excited because Docker actually installs a Linux VM that you can run everywhere. And this is a super constrained environment, which means all the friction and all the engineering that we've been doing to make sure that telepresence works seamlessly on Mac OS, Windows, and Linux, we can actually delegate back into Docker. So with Docker Desktop Extensions, we've actually built telepresence, a telepresence extension for Docker Desktop, and it uses their SDK. It gives you a better developer experience because instead of the CLI, we give you a graphical user interface. The installation, instead of a brew install on Mac and a curl on Linux and a different sort of installer on Windows, we just use the Docker Desktop for Extensions installer. So you just one click install from the marketplace. And finally, it just works because it's a constrained environment. You just run inside the Docker virtual machine. And so if your Docker is working, Telepresence is going to work. So here I'm going to show you a demo video. To show the Docker desktop for extension with telepresence, I've created a basic cloud native application that consists of three services. It actually shows the favorite emoji associated with each person. And there are three services. There's the web service on the front end and two back end services, the emoji service and the user service. And you can see here, there's a very simple user interface. Only Moby likes whales. I also have an API endpoint that I can use automated testing. And so what I'm going to do is Docker told us everyone loves whales. So I'm going to actually run the user service locally in Docker, connect to my remote cluster where I have the other two services running. And I'm going to tell Telepresence to route my test traffic that hits the user service to my local container. And you can see here, I've got an intercept running. And then when I actually run these tests against my API endpoint, one of these tests fails because I'm not actually returning all whales as the emoji. So I go into my code locally in my IDE. I change it to return whales for everyone. It does a hot reload. You can see how fast this is. I'm not waiting for a push to registry. I rerun my test locally. Immediately they pass. Again, I'm not waiting on anything. And then if I actually reload, I can actually create and share this preview URL with other people. And you can see everyone is seeing whales. Perfect. And so this is how telepresence radically accelerates the testing workflow and that development loop without waiting on someone else. And you can actually accelerate your collaboration as well. So Nick, thanks for joining. So Nick Powell is one of the primary engineers behind the Docker desktop 
extension for telepresence. If you want the history, I can go through like uh, yeah. our first yeah, yeah. approach. And then, yeah, so the uh, first thing we tried to do is uh, uh, we tried to work telepresence as it currently works, like out of the box, yeah. right, where you just uh, put the client on the host's machine, on the, sorry, we put the, we put telepresence binary on the, on the user's machine and just call the binary commands as the user wants. Yeah. Um, but the problem with that is that uh, telepresence requires root access, and one of the big one of the big requirements that Docker wants for its extensions is it doesn't they don't want to uh, they don't want extensions that require root access. Yeah. So um, we tried a lot of things. We tried um, putting. We tried. Uh, we tried. Let's see. We did a lot of investigations at the start to um, try to get to talk to all the Docker containers. Like you can intercept to any Docker container. Or mm -hmm. We tried to, um, we even dug into like the IP tables to see if we could change the, the Docker uh, networking so that we could get uh, messages back and forth, maybe between Docker containers, maybe to the host machine. We, uh, we weren't able to come up with a perfect solution. Yeah, but then uh, as Bjorn, Bjorn is our CTO. He kind of uh, came in and kind of changed our attitude a little bit. He said instead of making the perfect solution, just make something that's useful. Yeah, and yeah. that really changed our attitude. To uh, we we basically wanted just to make some make telepresence work in a limited set of things that's useful and and uh, productive for for everyone. Um, Got it. And that changed our outlook so that we, instead of uh, uh, trying to connect to every Docker container, now we're only looking at a subset of Docker containers that runs on something called the Docker host network. Got it. Okay. So, so essentially then with the, the work that we did is if you are running a Docker container, you're running, which is essentially what you mean by host network. If you're running Docker container, then you can connect it to the cluster with telepresence. But for example, if my web browser, which doesn't run in a Docker container, won't connect to the Kubernetes cluster. Exactly. Um, because we don't want to require root access, we don't touch the user's machine at all. Our telepresence runs Got entirely it. within a Docker container and it only modifies the network for the Docker's host network. Got it. Okay, makes perfect sense. So can you just, walk me through what the general architecture is of a Docker desktop extension? Sure. Uh, it starts with the UI, which is the part that faces the user. And then uh, that's really all you need for the most basic extension. Like uh, one of the examples that Docker released is an extension that just has a little whale like floating by on the screen. But of course, uh, to do something useful often has to be more complicated than that. So. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can uh, put binaries on the host machine. Mm -hmm. You can create, spin up uh, a Docker compose file. So you can have a bunch of Docker containers running uh, for your extension. And um, yeah, I think those are the, those are the okay, main so is building it, blocks. And, and so the UI is basically just this React app. It's just a React UI, is that right? Exactly. And, and so can you talk about the release cycle then? So, so we write some code and then how do, how do we get it into the, the Docker extensions marketplace? So that container you're talking about is pre-built and pushed to a repo, our, our, our ambassador Docker Hub repo. Mm -hmm. And so what the extension will do is our extension comes with a compose file and the compose file is run up by the Docker SDK and it pulls that, um, that uh, Docker container and runs it in the, in the Docker host network. Yeah, you. Know, I know one of the problems we've had or challenges I should say is that getting telepresence to run on Windows and Mac and Linux is a little bit of a headache because they're just different operating systems. And the good news with Docker is that because it's a Linux VM, really if it works on Linux in the Linux VM, then it should work on Docker desktop for Windows, Docker desktop for Mac, Docker desktop for, for Linux, is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's a small caveat there is that uh, uh, Docker's host network is uh, for uh, Windows and for Mac is um, is its own thing. 
it's uh, it's, it's a entirely contained uh, VM within the user's machine. However, on Linux machines, Docker's host network is actually the user's machine. So uh, it's uh, you're right that it will if it works on Linux, it'll always work on Linux because uh, um, the user's machine is still is also the host network. Uh, the the cool thing about the Docker host network is that all the containers using this network share the uh, the network. Uh, share it. all the devices within it. So we just put the uh, div we in our container. We create the ton device, and all the other containers have access to this device. All the other containers running on the host network. If if I'm developing an extension, any advice for anyone developing extensions? Hmm. Uh, so uh, as a uh, we kind of had a front end task was kind of given to a backend team. I understand why, but it's just kind of, we we're kind of all floundering a little bit, but thankfully, you know, I was very surprised that the Docker actually uses Material UI. And uh, one of my internships was just working with Material UI for three months. Oh, so, okay, that's so cool. Okay, thank goodness. So we okay. kind of lucked out. That, yeah, uh, yeah. All right, well, Nick, thank you so much. So this is perfect. To recap, Developing and testing Kubernetes applications. Your traditional model is to build, push, and wait. And that inner dev test loop for microservices is slow, whether you're running locally or remotely. With Docker and Telepresence, you can click, intercept, and run. So you get that real-time dev and test loop. You proxy all your local containers directly onto your remote Kubernetes cluster. And then you use your local Docker desktop to provide all the isolation that you need. We've had great community feedback from our early users so far, so please keep it coming. There's clearly a need for improved development speed when you're developing with containers and Kubernetes, and Docker Desktop is a fantastic place for all engineers to anchor their workflow. Testing microservices is challenging, and many users commented that the combination of telepresence and Docker Desktop gives them the ability and power to speed up test iterations. If you've been developing for a while, you know how important it is for your code test dev loop to be fast. And with Telepresence, we change your dev loop from minutes to seconds, and that is a huge difference. Even the Docker engineers, special shout out to Felipe, themselves started tapping into the speed boost when testing microservices. So accelerate your test workflow today. Just use a one-click install in the marketplace. We've got documentation here, A8R ambassador.io slash docker dash docs, community slack, AAR.io slash Slack, and we have a special Slack channel just for Docker users, Docker Extension Telepresence. Thank you so much, and have a great day.